There's a single point at the center of black holes where the laws of physics, math, and time itself breaks down. This singular point has the potential to either explain the entirety of the universe or set us right back to the beginning and understanding it all. But before we dive into how gravitational singularities break down the strongest of theories, it's essential to know exactly what they are. Gravitational singularities were first theorized by Einstein's general relativity, which is our best theory on how gravity works. In general relativity, there are two types of singularities, coordinate singularities and true singularities. A coordinate singularity we believe to have figured out, but it's still important for understanding true singularities. These sit at a specific distance from the center called the Schwarzschild radius. This Schwarzschild radius is defined by the point at which the gravitational pull of an object is so strong that not even light can escape, such as the event horizon of a black hole. This makes coordinate singularities appear infinities in one system, such as in the Schwarzschild radius, but may be finite in another coordinate system so it just comes down to an error in our measurement systems. However, this only works if the object's radius is bigger than its Schwarzschild radius. If the radius is smaller, then it becomes a true singularity, and this is what we find at the center of black holes or at the beginning of our universe, a theorized point with infinite density that breaks the laws of physics. The easiest and most common way to explain a true singularity is comparing it to dividing x by zero. The math just doesn't work and the numbers go off the charts. This true point is believed to happen in two circumstances, the Big Bang and black holes. The Big Bang, which was conceptualized using general relativity, says that about 13.77 billion years ago, the universe was condensed into an infinitely dense point. But that doesn't work, because as we stated above, general relativity doesn't support infinitely dense points, and physicists agree, concluding it's incorrect. Yet the Big Bang theory is still super successful at describing the history of our universe since that moment. So it sort of shows a crack in our understandings of gravity, which being one of the most fundamental theories is pretty intriguing. There are other ways people have tried to explain singularities through different theories. From my research, I found they either attempt to reject singularities altogether, leave it up to interpretation, but don't go further into how they exist or offer a different method to explain them. And it all came down to how they theorize space-time. To explain this better, I'll give you two hypothetical theories. So first, causal set theory. Normally in general relativity, space and time are thought of as being smooth and continuous, like a never-ending fabric. But causal set theory says that space and time are actually made up of tiny building blocks called space-time atoms. Since nothing can be smaller than these atoms, causal set theory reshapes singularities into something more complex. So instead of leaving room for singularities like general relativity does, causal set theory merely says they don't exist and need to be manifested in some other way at this scale. So this really doesn't help explain what was going on in the universe 13.77 billion years ago, it just further proves 13.77 billion years ago couldn't happen. Another theory would be string theory, which would more of offer a method in approaching singularities. Instead of looking at space-time as a smooth continuum like general relativity or building blocks like causal set theory, string theory, like its name states, says that everything is made out of tiny vibrating strings. These strings replace the idea of basic units like electrons and instead offers that vibrations of the strings determine their properties such as mass and charge. String theory uses this to explain true singularities by saying it's not infinitely dense after all, but instead a more complex, finite structure that has information encoded on a lower dimensional boundary. This idea comes from the holographic principle, which is a concept within string theory. The best way of thinking of it is to visualize a hologram. It's a 2D surface like a film that contains all the information needed to produce a 3D image. In the case of a black hole, the boundary is its event horizon, which encodes all the information past it which light can't escape. Or in an even more mind-bending example, the universe. It implies that the three-dimensional reality we experience could be a kind of projection of information stored on a distant 2D boundary like the edge of the observable universe. If this theory holds true, we could observe this singularity within a black hole from the event horizon. Now, if you're confused, congratulations, you're just like me, and that was sort of the goal of this video. We know by definition what a gravitational singularity is, and in our most concrete theories, we say they exist while also not being able to comprehend infinity. And since true singularities are beyond our best understandings of math, we don't have equations that describe how matter and energy behave in them, meaning they don't follow our rules of physics. If these points don't follow our rules of physics, that could allow for different theories such as causal set theory or string theory to exist. Figuring out singularities could be a massive breakthrough for physics, the history of the universe, and humanity as a whole. 
If you want to continue this conversation, you're more than welcome to join the Discord where you can discuss prior videos and help with future ones. But for now, that's it for me, and I'll see you guys in the next video.